Hello dear students, let's see this very interesting question of geometrical optics. In this question, there is a right angle prism and this right angle prism, there is a ray incident parallel to the base at height h1. It suffers first TIR here, goes like that and suffers another TIR, reach up to here and here it comes outside and this time when it goes outside, the emergent ray is the parallel to the incident ray but the height of the emergent ray with respect to base is reduced with respect to the incident ray and that's why it is called the demagnifier. So what we have to find, we have to find what is the refractive index of this prism for this to happen, what is the demagnification ratio h1 by h2 and if the mu is fixed, what is the angle theta of the prism for this thing to happen. So let's see first the geometry of the problem. Now let's make some normals. These are the normal, uh, this is normal at this point and this is normal at this point. So this angle is 90 degree and this angle is 90 degree. And this is a normal here and this is normal here. So uh, this thing is theta, this ray emergent ray is parallel to the base. So this angle is theta and so is this angle because this ray is also parallel to the base. And uh, this angle will obviously be 90 degree minus theta. And this angle is 90 degree. So this remaining angle is 90 minus 90 minus theta. So that is theta. This angle is theta and this angle is 90 degree so this angle is 90 minus theta plus theta that is 90 minus 2 theta so this angle is 90 degree minus 2 theta and this right angle triangle this is 90 degree so the other angle the these two angles sum should be 90 degree so this angle is 2 theta and this is incident ray here, this is reflected ray here. So if this is 2 theta, so this is 2 theta. So this angle is, this angle is uh, 180, this is 2 theta, this is 2 theta. So this angle is 180 degree minus 4 theta. And in this triangle, this is theta, this is 180 minus 4 theta. So this angle should be. 3 theta and this angle is 90 degree this is 3 theta so this is 90 minus 3 theta and uh, this angle is also 90 degree so this is theta so this is 90 minus theta now let me keep, keep the only the useful information so here this angle of incidence was uh, 90 degree minus theta this angle was uh, theta this angle was sorry 2 theta and the angle of incidence here this angle this is the angle of incidence so this angle of incidence here was 90 degree minus 3 theta and the angle of refraction here was 90 degree minus theta. That's what we had calculated. So let's calculate the value of mu. So applying Snell's law at the surface, mu into angle of sine of the angle of incidence sine 90 degree minus 3 theta is equal to mu hot side 1 into sine of the angle of refraction 90 degree minus theta. So that would be mu uh, cos 3 theta is equal to cos theta. So we will get mu is equal to cos theta divided by cos 3 theta and that is the value of mu. So now we have to find the range of theta for a given mu. So again, I'll write the important angle. This angle was uh, 90 minus theta. This angle was 2 theta. So this angle is uh, 90 degree minus 2 theta. And this angle was uh, 3 theta. So this angle is uh, 90 degree minus 3 theta. And TIR was taking place here, TIR was taking place here and there was a refraction taking place here. 
the condition of TIR is that the angle of incidence should be greater than the critical angle. So here there is a TIR. So first condition is a 90 degree minus theta is greater than C. And here also TIR this 90 minus 2 theta is the angle of incidence. So here also 90 degree minus 2 theta should be greater than C. And uh, here there is a refraction taking place so it means the angle of incidence is less than critical angle so here 90 degree minus 3 c 3 theta is less than c and one more thing we have to have the tir at both the surfaces if i will take the first condition that that is obviously uh, it will ensure that there is a tir at the first surface but that would not mean tir at the second surface but if we take 90 minus 2 theta greater than c that will include this possibility also so if we if we want to take only one condition which will ensure that there is a tir at both the surface so i will have to just take a 90 degree minus 2 theta is greater than c because that that actually includes this condition also so now taking this condition 90 minus 2 theta greater than c take sin on both sides so sin 90 degree minus 2 theta is greater than sin c and sin c is 1 by mu so that would mean uh, sin 90 minus 2 theta is a uh, cos 2 theta so cos 2 theta is greater than 1 by mu so that would mean uh, 2 theta is actually less than cos inverse 1 by mu why because as theta increases cos decreases so i've got one condition theta is less than from here 1 by 2 cos inverse of 1 by mu and now this condition 90 minus 3 theta is less than c again take sine on both sides so sine 90 degree minus 3 theta is less than sine c so that would mean cos 3 theta is less than sin c sin c is 1 by mu so 3 theta is greater than cos inverse 1 by mu so theta is less than 1 by 3 cos inverse 1 by mu so combining these two conditions we can write theta is less than 1 by 3 cos inverse of 1 by mu and less than 1 by 2 cosine of inverse 1 by mu that is a range of range of theta for a given mu for which this will happen and now the d magnification ratio and uh, once again i'll write only the important angle that we had found initially so this angle was theta this angle was uh, 2 theta this angle is also 2 theta and this angle is 3 theta and also let me remove some unnecessary parts to avoid distraction the initial height of the ray from the base is h1 and the final height of the ray emergent ray from the base is h2 and uh, let me name these uh, points a b c so look to the and let me write this m and n so the right angle triangle a b c sin 2 theta is uh, h1 by a b and the right angle triangle b c n also sin 2 theta is equal to h2 by uh, bc so it mean uh, if we divide these two equations 1 and 2 so because left hand side of both are sine 2 theta so we'll get h1 by h2 is ab by bc and that is my third equation and look to the triangle abc and we'll apply the sine rule the what the sign rule say ratio of a side to corresponding sign of the opposite angle is the same for all sides so a b upon a b upon sign of the opposite angle that is 3 theta is equal to b c upon 
sine of the opposite angle that is sine theta so we have uh, ab by bc is equal to sine 3 theta by sine theta so we have finally uh, h1 by h2 that is the d magnification ratio is equal to sine 3 theta by sine theta and that is my answer thank you